Hello, I'm Matteo, the Chief Mobile Opinionist here at the Tech Travel Geeks. And this is the Tech Travel Geeks side-by-side -side comparison between the Google Pixel 4 XL, launched in 2019, and the Google Pixel 5, launched in 2020. There's a year apart in these devices, and technically the Google Pixel 5 is the newer generation of the Pixel lineup of smartphones. But there's been some seriously large product decisions made between one year and the other in terms of feature set and more importantly positioning in the market. So we're going to go through the main similar similarities and differences between the two devices and I'll provide my impressions after almost a year using the Google Pixel 4 XL as one of my main devices and a few weeks using the Google Pixel 5 as one of my main devices. If you don't already, please do subscribe to the Tech Travel Geeks here on YouTube. Right then, so after a year of using the Google Pixel 4 XL, I can quite comfortably say that at the beginning I was quite disappointed. It didn't really meet up to my expectations of the device and especially in view of the price I paid for it at time of launch, which was around about uh, 700 or 800 pounds sterling in the UK. And more recently, I've just purchased the Google Pixel 5. There's no XL variant of the Google Pixel 5 this year, uh, but there are some pretty big similarities between the two in the usual Pixel lineup manner. So both devices have uh, AMOLED screens and the Google Pixel 4 XL has a higher resolution screen. So if we look at a white page, you'll see that the screen is uh, nice and light. It's an AMOLED screen or OLED screen uh, more specifically, and it's 1440 pixels by 3040. It's a 19 to 9 aspect ratio screen with a pretty high pixel density. It's 537 pixels per inch. But for most people in day-to-day -day use, that makes little or no difference. The places you'd have real advantage having that higher screen resolution tend to be things like using VR where you split the screen in two. So having that higher pixel density will potentially give you a better experience and sometimes watching video. The Google Pixel 4 XL allows you to record video at 4K at 30 frames per second, and you get to watch most of that on this display. But as I said, in day-to-day -day use, there's little or no difference in that space. Now, the screen, as you can see, doesn't have a notch, but there's a very small bezel at the bottom, and what some have referred to as the Frankenstein forehead at the top. Whereas the Google Pixel 5 has a nice, almost bezel-less screen from top to bottom and at both sides. That's because it has a punch hole dodge or a punch hole selfie camera in the top left of the screen. In this case, my wallpaper is making it look like a bowling ball hole. So you're less likely to notice it, but it's it's less noticeable and it also gives the possibility of having a more compact device in the Pixel 5. Both of them are AMOLED screens or OLED screens, whilst the Google Pixel 5 is a full HD display that's 1080 or 1080 by 2340 pixels. So this is also a slightly, slightly longer aspect ratio because it's 19 and a half to nine, which means that overall, the device uh, is slightly longer. So the aspect ratio corner to corner is slightly longer. Uh, and that allows the device to also be uh, slimmer as in the width of the device from top to bottom is smaller because of that aspect ratio change. Now, uh, in terms of displays, both have been great. In direct sunlight, they work fine. In this case, I have my bright soft light on for recording this video, no issues there. But I have to say, in terms of size and usability, the Google Pixel 5 comes out on top here. As I said, the higher resolution is nice to have and may be useful to some in some situations, but definitely uh, in day-to-day -day use, I prefer the slightly smaller and uh, more efficient screen, 
also because this will have a positive impact on uh, battery life. Now, another really important thing to, to bear in mind is that notch at the top. So the Google Pixel 4 has its selfie camera and uh, the, the unlock mechanism for face unlock built into that uh, Frankenstein notch, as well as something called Soli, Project Soli, or the radar uh, for controlling things. Now, this is a great feature, sort of science fiction has hit our, our future or had hit our future in 2019, but in day-to-day -day use, it was quite disappointing. Uh, I was doing all the force gestures and trying to switch tracks and everything. I just got so annoyed with it that I ended up switching that feature off and haven't really used it in 2020. Uh, so in terms of that Frankenstein notch, it made sense at the time and whilst aesthetically not very pleasing, it had its reasons for existing. The Google Pixel 5 doesn't have that. They did not include that feature in the device. They did not uh, bother with that. They went for a more functional uh, device uh, that didn't try and push the envelope in terms of hardware and features. The back of the Google Pixel 4 XL is glass. So it's a nice matte finish, a really nice material finish glass. But that comes with its own risks. Uh, that means that it's much more fragile and uh, also adds quite a bit of weight to the device. Uh, whilst I really, really liked it, at the end of the day, for about a year, I've been using this device in a case. So that's not been a real issue. Um, as you can see, the back of the Google Pixel 5 uh, is not glass. It's actually aluminium underneath what they call bioresin plastic to you and me, which gives it a soft touch finish and still enables wireless charging. Just like the Google Pixel 4 XL, you get wireless charging in the Google Pixel 5. And underneath that bioresin, they made a cutout in the metal of the aluminum uh, chassis to allow the wireless charging rings to be there, as well as NFC. It's quite a clever uh, solution, whilst giving you much more durability in your smartphone. Plus we're on the back, um, it's also important to, to remember that the Google Pixel 4 XL did not have a fingerprint scanner. They went all iphone on us and decided that face unlock was the way forward. Now that's fine in most cases, but uh, if you're wearing sunglasses sometimes, if you're wearing a face mask, as most of us are in 2020, that becomes a problem. It doesn't always work and you have to revert to a pin or a pattern unlock. Whereas the Google Pixel 5 did away with that uh, necessity for face unlock and put a traditional fingerprint scanner on the back, which is ergonomically easy to reach. I really like this solution. It may not look sexy or cool, but it's very, very practical. And more importantly, it's easy to access because you can feel that uh, even if you're not looking at your device, you can feel where it is to unlock it. And it's very, very fast and responsive. You can also enable the feature where you use that to pull down your notifications. Okay, so whilst we're on the back, let's look at the camera modules. They look very, very similar, apart from the positioning of that flash. So in terms of cameras, both of them have a 12.2 megapixel main camera. That's f over 1.7 in terms of its, its uh, aperture, and it performs really, really, really well. In terms of that hardware, it's almost the same. On paper, it's exactly the same. What makes a difference is the software. So the Google Pixel cameras and Google's camera smarts in the software of the device. And I've been a fan of the Google Pixel camera software since the original Pixel. I was really impressed by the uh, Huawei Nexus 6P, which I had uh, in 2015. That camera really is amazing. And the, with the Google Pixel 5 and the Google Pixel 4 XL, the main camera does really, really good job. Not so much as to the hardware, but mainly because of Google's software and how they handle that decent hardware without pushing the hardware barrier too far. Now, the Google Pixel 4 XL was disappointing to me in the camera department because it included a 16 megapixel uh, telephoto lens, which is great for zoom, but 
in situations like, for example, being in Singapore and wanting to take pictures of architecture, not having a wide angle lens when in 2019 that had become a key feature on most smartphones, particularly on my Huawei P30 Pro, uh, I ended up not using the Google Pixel 4 camera as much as I could have. Whereas in 2020 with the Google Pixel 5, Google have really listened and taken feedback from people and their users and swapped that telephoto lens out for, in this case, a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera. Now that really does make a difference. We're going to be doing a full video on the camera overview of the Google Pixel 5. Keep an eye out on the Tech Travel Geeks YouTube channel for that video. But I'm very positively impressed at the beginning, especially in low light. So if you use night mode on the wide angle lens, it does make a difference. So in terms of, of cameras, uh, the Google Pixel 4 XL was a very good basic point and shoot camera, but that lack of, tel uh, of, that lack of a, a wide angle lens really disappointed me in the end. And I found myself using my Huawei P30 Pro more than the Google Pixel 4 XL. So that's the back of the device. At the top, there's nothing really to talk about. The buttons on the two devices uh, have always been a cool feature in the Google Pixel 4 XL lineup. So on the 4 XL, of which I have in orange, you have that sort of light muted orange button, which indicates that that's the power button. Whereas on the Google Pixel 5 we have here, which is Sorta Sage, that's the official name of the color, it has a little glossy a greenish button. It's not as green as, for example, our Tech Travel Geeks face masks available to purchase in our merch store, but it is pretty uh, green, sort of sage. Uh, in terms of charging and power, both devices support wireless charging, and I've been using that quite, in, quite a lot on both devices. Both of them have stereo speakers at the bottom, uh, both of them use USB Type-C for charging, and both use 18 watt fast charging. It's not the fastest wireless, sorry, it's not the fastest wired charging, but it is pretty decent. It does a good job. Overall, in terms of ergonomics, I much prefer the smaller smartphone. 2020 has been a bit of an eye opener for me, where I've ended up preferring smaller smartphones. Whether that was the Huawei P40, whether that was the iPhone uh, 11, and then maybe the 12, uh, I really have fallen in love with a slightly smaller form factor. Maybe that's because I'm not commuting as much as I used to, I'm not traveling as much as I used to, and having a big screen for consuming media is a task that I've passed over to the TV or to my laptop or, uh, or tablet. But in terms of, of screen size and resolution and everything, Google Pixel 5 is the, the front runner and the form factor of the devices. I overall have to say that performance has been great. I'm not someone who does a lot of gaming on mobile. Uh, you'll, you will have seen on the Tech Travel Geeks YouTube channel a few videos where I have done some gaming, uh, but I'm not someone who spends a lot of time doing that. So in terms of performance for social media, photo and video editing and photo and video capturing, uh, both of them perform pretty well. There's no real discernible difference. Technically, the Google Pixel 4 XL has a more powerful chipset, uh, but there is one key thing to remember. There's, in this case, uh, in, this, in the Google Pixel 4 XL, there was less RAM. There's six gigabytes of RAM. Whereas with the Google Pixel 5, that's been upped to eight gigabytes of RAM which gives you extra space for maybe multitasking on the device. And especially when it comes to video editing or photo editing, that may speed things up. Another key difference in terms of the chipset and the platform is that with the Google Pixel 4 XL, Google went with the Snapdragon 855. At the time, it was Qualcomm's flagship chipset. Um, that is a very powerful chipset, but in day-to-day -day use, it doesn't really deliver that much to most people. With the Google Pixel 5, Google have gone with the Snapdragon 765. 
It's a 7 series chipset, unlike the Google Pixel 4 XL, which was an, uh, on an 8 series chipset. Um, that means that it is more power efficient. It pretty much does all the same things in the basics. And the only place I've noticed a slight difference is in the space of some photo editing or more importantly, the photo processing after you've taken the picture, especially in night mode or sometimes in portrait mode. Whereas the Google Pixel 4 XL in those situations is sometimes slightly faster, but to most users, this will make little or no difference. In terms of zoom for the cameras, they perform similarly. Technically, the Pixel 4 XL is better, but it's not a feature that I use that much. So in terms of chipsets, there has been a significant change between one year and the other. The Google Pixel 5 is technically a lower uh, level Details one. On how to sync your account. Apologies, that's... Info. So with the, with the 4XL, you have a faster chipset. Um, and at the time, Google also had its own image uh, or ISP chip doing some of the heavy lifting in terms of uh, photo work. Whereas with the Google Pixel 5, Google have relied entirely on Qualcomm's chipset, which has that feature set built into it now. Overall, um, I'm going to be a bit sad to say goodbye to the Pixel 4 XL, mainly because I really like the color. But in terms of performance and everyday use, it's telling that in 2019 and then 2020, I never really took my SIM card out of my Huawei P30 Pro. The Pixel 4 XL just didn't satisfy me in terms of photography as much as the P30 Pro did. Whereas I have to say, after a few weeks, I have put my main SIM card, it has finally come out of the P30 Pro and has gone into the Google Pixel 5. So there we go. Obviously, at this point in time, there's no official news on if there will be a Google Pixel 5 XL. Uh, we will just have to wait and see. There have been some rumors, unconfirmed, uh, this is just whispers in some social networks about a Pixel 5 Ultra, a true flagship £1,000 or £2,000 phone to compete with the likes of the iPhone 12 Pro Max for Enterprise Edition, or whatever it's called, and the Huawei Mate series uh, that was just announced this week. But for now, we hope you've enjoyed this quick overview of the two smartphones. Uh, one last detail that uh, I think is important to bear in mind is that the Google Pixel 4 XL has a 3,700 milliamp hour battery. In my experience, especially in 2019, that was not a very well good performing battery. It didn't do very well. But as the Google Pixel 4 XL got softer updates from Google, it did perform better. And I was starting to get a full day's use out of it, which was really impressive. As the device matured, as Google tuned and optimized the software through software updates, it actually improved its battery performance. Whereas the Google Pixel 5 with its smaller screen actually has a bigger battery in the device, uh, which performs better in terms of power and efficiency, but it's part of that whole product mix that Google put into it with the smaller screen, lower resolution screen, different, more efficient chipset. It all adds up to a much better battery life, which is why I've put my main SIM card in the Google Pixel 5. But for now, thanks for watching this quick side-by-side -side comparison between the Google Pixel 4 XL and the Google Pixel 5. If you have any questions to ask, please leave them. Whoops, we've triggered Google again. If you have any questions to ask us, please leave them as a comment in the section below this video. And if you'd like to know more or follow our upcoming videos on the Google Pixel 5, please do subscribe to the Tech Travel Geeks here on YouTube. But for now, thanks for watching and goodbye.